What's up guys? In this video you're going to see some nice fish come aboard the boat. My, my two friends Fal and Jamie. Uh, so we're going to talk about resident fish versus inshore fish. Uh, inshore is more shallow water. You know, there's a, uh, as you know, totog migrate from offshore inshore to spawn. A lot of the species moving around are more toward the shallow. You can get big fish in the shallow, absolutely. But resident fish are referred to as the offshore fish that has got a home deep in a wreck, you know, has grown very big, you know, lives there most of its life. Uh, there is spots inshore where it's very deep water, heavy structure, where you can find these fish called resident fish. So there's a different bite. You're gonna, you're gonna notice when you're in shallow water and you're on a pile of fish, everybody's fighting for that bait. It's very aggressive. Um, with a resident fish, you're gonna notice a different bite. It, it, it's, it's much more subtle. It's a patience game. You'll actually wait for these fish. You know, you, you gotta know they're there by either marking them on your down skin uh, or seeing really good structure on your top topography chip or your side skin waiting for a bite and when the bite comes you'll, you'll know you'll know the difference it'll be very very subtle and these fish are so smart that if, if you're trying to set the hook before they're actually on it and that sinker comes up a lot of times they won't go back for it sometimes they do but more times than often uh, they don't uh, they, they won't bite it again so I'm gonna point out to you guys zoomed in on my rod tip when you see this type of bite happening and it's in much deeper water and you'll see there's bigger fish coming up more consistently so uh we're going to go over the winner for the fitted hat and then uh, we'll get to the fishing tight lines so here's a list of all the names there was 10 who commented shared Number three, Sam Doty. Congrats, you won the hat. I'll get your info. I wanna find it. Go, go! New reel. Shimano Ultegra 5000. 15 pound test. Let's see how this goes. Swing up. There you go. Ooh, that's a tog. That's a tog. That's a tog. <laughs> Ooh, it's peel and drag. It's a good one. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it, Fal. Let me get it. Nice fish, Jamie. Mr. Smith. Is it on, Fal? There it is on there. There he is. Bring him up, Jamie. Beautiful fish, Jamie. Nice fish, Jamie. Wow. Oh, hey, buddy. Here you go, buddy. Oh. That's all. That's a six pounder all day, Fal. That's a six. Yeah, that's about a six pounder. It's just around a six. Nice fish, Jam. Nice spot you got us on. Ooh. Give me one more hard one. Oh, got it. We're going to fish two different locations here, and you're going to see two different types of bites. Uh, the first location, there's a lot of aggressive bite, uh, smaller fish. Then you're going to see us get into some bigger fish at the other location. And what I've learned from other captains is these smaller fish are usually migratory fish fish that are moving around from different areas with a much more aggressive bite they'll pretty much bite anything once the bites on then at the other location where the bigger fish are you're going to notice the bite changes it, it's much more subtle and i'm going to point out what you have to look for in order to hook up with one of these what we call resident fish fish that have been around a very long time probably have been hooked or just are very uh, precautious when it comes to biting baits. Now put him down. And just swing him up high. Here he is. <laughs> right, good. Okay. Yeah. 
He was sitting on it, dude, 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 dude. This is a good fish. Oh, it's a good fish. My drag is tight. That's why he's not running. I got my drag tight. I leave that. I, I foul hooked him, but. Oh God. That's a good fish. Oh, bro. This one's my drag is tight. I like it. Oh God, dude. This is a good fish. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look out. Look out. Here he comes. Get him. This fish is a female. Notice the darker color pattern, the belly not so white, and the chin being much smaller. Bring him over to me. Got him. Just like out. There you go. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Ooh, dude, oh, this is a good one. This is taking drag. That's a good one. Uh, I would say so, yeah. Took drag. This feels kind of heavy. He's gonna probably come on and give me another fight when I get about halfway up, fully up. There he goes, yep, he's a good one. So this Shimano Altegra 5000 reel I'm using uh, is very comparable to the Stratic. It's slightly less expensive and you can feel that it's made with slightly less expensive parts But I'm really enjoying it. You hold it. He puts it into hyper hyperlapse mode You're gonna see my rod tip bend down right here I didn't even feel that strike and I just lifted. That's how I know there's a fish there when I see that bend I just lift the rod up and it usually sets the hook. This is big fighting hard bro one key way to find these larger fish is to fish areas that are not pressured by a big group of boats you have a much better opportunity to find a larger fish in an area that's not pressured so much that was a whole crab nice. a whole far crab i must have whoa must have my drag tight dude this is fucking wearing my shoulder out Dude, he's... Okay. That's a tog. It's a monster tog, dude. Uh, one of the viewers to the channel had asked how you can tell the difference of male and female. This is this one's a, a male, obviously. You can see the uh, pronounced big white chin and more of a gray body, and they usually have that spot occasionally on the side. Like that. That's seven, seven and a half. They get, they get way bigger than this. Jamie's got a. That's the one, Smitty. You got him. He's got that. He's good strike. Yeah. I don't know just yet. They start talking about him. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're messaging. They're smart. Definitely smart fish. This guy's got brains. Oh, yeah. Want me to get a net? Nice one. Big one. It's a good size. Good eater. Good fish. Fatty McFat. Nice fish. Wow. Again, you'll see my rod tip barely move and then just go down and I lift. You know, it's not like these other aggressive fish. And this one's an even bigger fish right here. The fish after this is even bigger. Same scenario. This one's pretty big. I don't know how big. I think. I, if it stopped fighting, then it's a dogfish. No, it's still fighting. It's taking drag. It's big. Yeah, it's a good one. I'll get the net foul. For, this one another one come on grab him pal there you go nice that's like a six and change 
so this male has rectal prolapse. It usually comes from eating shellfish, uh, harder shell crabs, but he looks healthy enough to release. It usually reduces on its own. They're tricky, man. They like bump, like you say. Yeah. yeah. And I backed off. I let more line out, and then he went whack, like you were saying. He ain't that good. So Jamie was just talking about how the bite is different over at this location. How how they'll, you'll get little subtle taps, even on a bigger fish, and then finally you'll see your rod go down, and you just lift. Some of these fish, you have to be so patient. They'll just tap it ever so slightly, over and over again. You know, and you want to lift, but if you lift, they'll actually, they'll leave. They won't even bite again. This next fish was poking at my bait for quite a while. So again, you're going to see my tip barely even move. And I'm going to see it just go down a little, get that little bend, and then I lift right there. And this is the big fish of the day. Uh, it was almost eight pounds. Dude, this is big. Oh my god, dude! Oh god, this is a good one. Did you see how much drag it took? My drag's kind of tight. You want the, the camera underwater, foul. You don't gotta hang over, you just keep the stick underwater. There you go. Keep that camera underwater. Don't pull this arm up and, and it push down. There you go. I'm gonna lose the fish now. Oh my god. Get ready. Get ready, foul. Jamie, grab it, foul. Look at that thing. <laughs> Told you. They're here. This fish also had a rectal prolapse, so once I took the hook out, I noticed it was bleeding pretty bad. So I just, you know, we had one fish left to keep. We ended up keeping this one, otherwise I would have returned it. It just, it didn't look like it was doing good with all that bleeding. And uh, we called it a day. Dude, when that thing, dude, when that thing hit came, pulled me down. Oh God, he's pooping bad. I don't know if he's gonna survive. Oh God. I don't think so. No, nah, no, nah, nah. he's bleeding internally and shit, dude. No, nah. we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to. Yeah. What do you do now? Uh, might have to keep him, bring him to. We go, weigh him in. So, let's see how many inches he is. Oh god, yeah, he's. He's not happy. What? No, yeah, I got it. Twenty-three inch. So yeah, he's he's eight. 